Some companies are serious and when they are serious, they do big things. And if you're going to be half-hearted, you're going to get half-hearted results and you deserve being in second to last place, if not last itself. And uh, with that said, why don't we just cover some exciting things going on today in batteries, in EVs, and uh, I assure you, the last story we have is intense. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So uh, I'm joined today, as I too often am, by Randy Kirk. And uh, yeah, uh, what do you think of my temporary studio here in St. George, Utah, where I am? I think the art is just so impressive. It's all good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, I know. Uh, so uh, yeah, three stories, all exciting. Let's start with this one. We've got uh, some good news on the battery front. I don't know if you've heard, but CATL uh, said, we're going to make EV battery with a million kilometer warranty and deliveries have begun. This is real. This is out in the market. Hmm. Uh, uh, the largest, the world's largest battery maker. Now, if this was some no-name battery company, I'd say, oh, good. You're pumping up sales in advance of going bankrupt from all the warranty claims. But this is CATL, the world's largest battery maker. Yeah, they've they've gone from R&D and prototype into the launch phase. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have to buy, I believe, the entire, mo the, the whole shebang together because they need to control the implementation of the battery. But Tesla and others have an eight-year, 70% retention warranty. So this new one doubles the worry-free life of the vehicle. Mm. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, CATL's bus edition battery is meant for vehicles that may actually cover such distances, um, but they have similar packs destined for light-duty vehicles. And it's got a remarkable uh, power density, 175 watt hours per kilogram. Uh, so that is that is what we were getting from nickel batteries six, seven years ago. So this is this is quite good. This so is yeah, this, good. this would be particularly interesting, I think, to Tesla. I'm assuming, you know, they're obviously one of CATL's largest, if not their largest customer. And, uh, you know, obviously, when we get into the cyber cab business, um, then all of a sudden having a battery that lasts longer than 500,000 miles matters. It really and so, does. And so where Tesla has talked about a million mile battery, and there's no doubt that the batteries that are out there are doing very, very well in terms of holding on to their capacity, um, uh, there, there might be some argument to be made that having an 800,000 mile warranty or a, hundred, a million mile warranty would be a useful selling point. It just means worry free, you know? There yeah. are, uh, I've, it, it says here the zero battery degradation in the first uh, thousand charge and discharge cycles. Mm. So, and if you're talking 300 miles of range, a thousand charge cycles is 300,000 miles. Yeah. That's stunning. And that means uh, if I've got 300 miles of range today, in three years, I'll still have. Yeah. at least 298 uh which is great i have not had problems with degradation on mine so we're talking about good news and if we're going to talk about good news we certainly have to share this q3 produced our seven millionth vehicle and it says at the fremont factory they don't mean seven million at fremont they mean right. seven million total it happened at fremont right. seven million vehicles that's a little bit exciting now in terms of you know there are companies that make that many a year specifically two of them, one or two of them. Uh, but 7 million is nothing to sneeze at. That's that's great news. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, it's, it's a number. I mean, it's always fun. Uh, you're a math guy. I'm a math guy. Uh, statistics, you know, has always been interesting to me. Um, you know, from, I, I can still, I thought about this recently. It's like the first stats that I cared about were what? Baseball stats. On the back of my baseball card or in the morning paper, um, finding out how my favorite pitcher, my favorite, you know, Stan Musial, I was a St. Louis Cardinal guy, you know, uh, finding out how he did yesterday, how he's doing for the year. Is he still in number one in base hits? Number, you know, so uh, stats are fun and that's a cool stat. I forgot to ask the viewers. I want to know because I'm in St. George right now. And by the time this comes out, I'm not. I'm back home. Where are you and how's the weather? Because uh, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Share that, won't you? Uh, your just city or country or look, whatever you're comfortable with, 
and the weather. What is the weather today? We must know. Uh, and now I told you the third story is intense. I don't know if you're ready for it. Are you ready, Randy? On the edge of my um, outdoor gear. <laughs> October 25th, 2024, one millionth vehicle built at uh, General Assembly 4 in Fremont. It's intense. In building of intense. Yeah. What did you think I meant? I thought you were going to talk oh, about... Oh, no, no, no. It's 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 yeah. literally a tent, Randy. It's a sprung structure. I thought you were I'm... talking about a tent that they were going to put, you know, like a... They're building I am these so sorry that I misled you. I certainly trucks. did not mean to do that, yeah. clearly. Or that is not my style. Uh, yeah, this uh, temporary sprung structure that simply cannot work. And for those who don't recall, the early uh, thing about it was Model Y production was vastly bigger. Uh, demand was greater than expected. And they said, look, we've got extra robots kicking around. Can we just use them? And it's like, well, can we? I mean, they're not necessarily the right robots to be using. And uh, they did it. They put the line together and there it is. There you go. So good job. Uh, so stop making fun of the tents, you guys. That's right. Um, That's right. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Um, you know, uh, just, you know, Elon Musk, the guy who is, and his teams, of course, that are involved in this, they're always, um, what's that word? They're always intense. <laughs> they're not going to let a, a, some small problem get in the way. They're going to uh, go over it, under it, around or through. And that is uh, one of the things I love about uh, Elon and Tesla. Well, most of the time they're not in the tent, they're in the main structure, but I, I guess I get your point. You guys, what are we doing here? Has Brian lost his mind? I think it's quite possible he has. Yeah, well, so- It's assuming there was something to lose. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I, I did, I have gone crazy, but in my to my credit, it was a short commute. So yes. <laughs> uh, you, you can see it from here. It's a, it's a direct route. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, any other uh, big production news you wanted to mention before we go? Uh, big production news, uh, yeah. you know, um, no. I should mention that I've got some great videos coming out over the next uh, already probably. I've been talking with uh, auto engineers about CyberCab and we've been talking about the manufacturability, the pricing, and the ways in which the RoboCab cannot be meat driven. Uh, and there are a number of factors. The steering wheel is not as important as I figured, but the battery, the motor, and a whole bunch of other elements make it the sort of thing that a human would not find acceptable in a driving experience. Check those out if you haven't. And uh, when those are up, Randy, I'll make sure you get a link so that, uh, because you may, wish to talk about them next week. I might. You know, the interesting thing about all this CyberCab thing to me is going to be the sociology of it. And then eventually the anthropology looking back. But anyway, it's going to be, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how people take to car ownership, decision not to own, uh, decision, you know, how, how cheap does it have to be to make that decision? Um, how convenient does it have to be? You know, when does the transition start? How does it move along? Uh, what does it, how does it affect the zeitgeist, the overall, you know, kind of uh, thinking about your 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 humanness? I mean, cars have been a status symbol for a very very long time. You choose your car like you choose your clothes in terms of whether it fits you um, as a person as your personality is, is an ex, an extension or a projection of your personality. Um, how does all that change? Uh, we already got young men and young women who might have thought that, uh, you know, getting a car, owning a car, part of their transition into adulthood, that that's going away because they don't care, they don't own them anymore or don't don't uh, even, even drive, don't even get licenses. So there's going to be, this is going to impact more than just, uh, you know, the day-to-day finances and methods of getting around. Will from Tesla Jigsaw recently, I, I had a chance to speak with him over the weekend. He flew out all the way to the, to the colonies to pay us a visit for our big light show in St. George. He was recently speaking at the everything electric, uh, electrify everything, everything electric, the fully charged show in Farnborough, England, the UK. And he was saying that in his panel, people would raise their hand, you know, would come up to the mic and say, great, you're pushing all these ultra efficient EVs, but why push EVs at all? Everyone should be on the bus. And, and his take was, I'm a wedding musician. 
how would that work? Forget the fact that I need to bring all my gear. Let's just pretend that's not an issue. But do you know how many buses it takes to get out to a wedding venue from where I live? And did you know that the buses don't always run late enough to get me back? I tried to take mass transit from Farnborough out to Luton, where my flight was, and at the hour my flight took place, there were there was no transit. The trains and buses did not run. So it would have been, I think, four hours to get me a 65, 70-minute drive. And that is, I mean, you might as well just go the night before and get a hotel. That's more wasteful, you guys. So there are ways to mitigate the insanity without uh, actually just jumping in and being fully crazy. We, I, I'm all for walkable cities. Walkable cities exist. They're very expensive because it costs money to build vertical. It's just how it works. Uh, we already have those things. If you wish to live in a walkable world, you already can. Uh, don't get mad at us because our grandparents built suburbs. That doesn't help anyone that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah. And so uh, I guess in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it leave it and everybody else uh, like subscribe stay tuned to juicy head on over to randy kirk's channel see what he's up to he's got some fantastic guests over there um who uh, many of whom i'm slightly jealous of uh so uh, uh yeah and uh everybody else uh stay tuned stay juicy and i cannot wait to hear from you clever robots all the time which is of course when i uh make videos and it is located conveniently on the flippity flop <laughs>